In this lecture, we start to talk about isometries in the plane. Isometries in R2. Okay, so um, let's first discuss the following general question. So what is geometry? And of course, there are tons of answers to this question, but uh, Usually what people say is that geometry studies properties of figures. So we take, for instance, plane, and we study, I know, circles, triangles, and so on. But um, this answer clearly raises some other questions, because uh, what kind of properties do we study? And for instance, we clearly don't care about things like a color or a circle, um, and so on. So, of course, one can say that uh, maybe we care about properties of the figures with respect to their position, to other figures, and so on. Uh, but, for instance, we don't care uh, about properties of the circle, um, like how far it is from the border of the board. So, uh, if one thinks a little bit uh, more about that, uh, the answer is that geometry, at least uh, this plain rigid geometry, Euclidean geometry, studies those properties of the figures which are invariant under certain transformations, which don't change if we move a picture as a whole. So, for instance, we think that this triangle uh, equals to this triangle, if one can take this triangle, move it in space, and, and identify with this triangle. And there are some known theorems when two triangles are equal. For instance, if all their three sides are equal. And um, uh, even this fundamental definition of kind of what geometry studies, properties of uh, figures which are invariant under isometries, requires this uh, notion of isometry, or like rigid motion, if you wish. Uh, and so, in this lecture, I'm going to define isometry, and this will be sort of a group of symmetries of Euclidean geometry. And then uh, I will give some examples of isometries, and we will apply certain isometries and their properties um, to actual geometric theories. So, let's start with a definition. So, definition. So, um, an isometry. Um, is a map f from R2 to R2 such that. So, isometry is, people say, a transformation, a map, a function from plane to plane, which has the following two properties. So, first, f is a bijection. And uh, that's clear. And second is that f preserves distances. distances. So what that means, if you take any two points, A and B in R2, uh, then the distance between the points A and B, which I will denote by this segment in this uh, lines, uh, equals to the distance between points F of A, F of B. So for instance, the kind of isometry you can imagine is, is you take your plane and sort of take it as a rigid object and move somewhere. And then, of course, such transformation will preserve distances between points, and actually it will preserve much more like angles and send circles to circles and so on and so forth. So I will discuss it in a moment. So, um, a brief remark. So, to give this definition, one needs only one thing, one needs uh, distance. So, distance is a way to measure, measure distance between points. And probably for those of you who have taken already a course in uh, analysis uh, in metric spaces, of course, one can define a notion of isometry in a metric space. So, remark, uh, one can define um, isometries in many uh, metric spaces, uh, sorry, in, in all, in, in general metric spaces, general metric spaces, as a bijective map which preserves distances. But most metric spaces have very few isometries. So, 
uh, I'm not going to specify what I mean here, so uh, whatever this most means, but uh, I'm just saying that, as we will see, plane is a very symmetric object. It has tons of these isometries. Um, you can move any point to any point, rotate around it, and so on and so forth. And some other important spaces like higher dimensional space Rn or a sphere, and uh, then we will talk about hyperbolic space, uh, they have uh, lots of isometries. But if you take a general metric space with some other kind of way to measure distances, it will usually have very few isometries. And so this is why um, kind of it's interesting to study uh, spaces which have a lot of isometries, and, and R2 is one of those. So, um, okay, so maybe let me start with some examples. So here is the first one. So consider um, a certain vector v. v is a vector in R2. So let me remind you briefly what is a vector. So of course some, some people think that vector is just a segment with, uh, with an arrow on it, so kind of a directed segment. That's not actually true because what's important about vectors is that you identify two vectors which are parallel and equal in length. So you don't think of these two vectors as distinct, you think of them as, as equal. And so actually I just remind you that vectors are, are classes of equivalence of uh, oriented segments. And uh, this equivalence relation you use here is that two oriented sequence, uh, segments are equal if the corresponding vectors, sorry, uh, two vectors are equal if uh, 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 the lines uh, on which they lie are parallel, the segments are equal in length, and uh, uh, if you draw uh, lines through their beginning points, they lie in the same uh, half plane from the line AC. So vectors are not just oriented segments, but are classes of equivalence of oriented segments, where you consider two parallel and, and directed in the same way and equal in length oriented segments as, as equal. So V is this vector in R2. And again, so as I said, one can think of it as sort of this kind of all different equal to each other vectors going in the same direction, but with all points. So that's kind of what a vector is. It's not just one of them. Uh, and then, so define TV as a map from R2 to R2, where uh, TV of a point X equal to point Y, such that the vector XY coincides with the vector V. So basically you take any point X and you want to know where it goes under this map. And the answer is take a vector V, uh, move it to begin with this point X, and the end of it will be the image of the point uh, X under this transformation. So basically you take the whole plane as a rigid object and move in some direction, where the direction and the length on which you move is uh, governed by the vector V. Um, and and uh, it's really easy to see that T of V is an isometry. So uh, obviously it's a bijection. Uh, and then uh, if you take two points x1, x2, and you take the same vector V and move them by this vector V uh, to points y1, y2, then you know that, that this uh, x1, uh, y1, x2, y2 is a parallelogram, and thus, uh, uh, because uh, the vectors of the opposite sides are equal, and then it implies that the distance x1, x2 equals to the distance y1, y2, which exactly is the condition that our parallel transport is an isometry. Um, moreover, it's useful to um, think about it in coordinates. So let's suppose that my vector has coordinates v equals to vx, vy, and then it's a little obvious uh, fact that a point with coordinates x, y will just go to the point with coordinates x plus vx, y plus vy. Uh, 
So just in terms of coordinates, you just add the same two numbers to each coordinate. And this is what a parallel transport is. Again, if you use a formula with square root of uh, sum of two squares for the distance, you'll see why, uh, why it's invariant under this transformation. Um, perfect. So this is an example of an isometry, a very important one. Okay, let's move to the second example of an isometry. Very important one. So, um, second example is central symmetry. So, um, let's pick certain point O in R2, and then we define a central symmetry with a center O, which is a map from R2 to R2, and SO of x equal to y uh, for y such that O is a midpoint of the segment xy, which I will denote like this. So, uh, so basically the picture is you have x, uh, sorry, you have O, and then you take any point x and reflect it with respect to O. x1 goes to y1, x2 goes to y2. So that, uh, that's what, uh, what this map does. And, and uh, the property is that the corresponding distances are equal. And actually here I prove for you that uh, uh, SO is an isometry. Uh, as so, the triangle X one O X two is equal to the triangle Y one O Y two because they have the same angle here and the sides are equal, and so the side X one X two equals to the side Y one Y two. So um, central symmetry um, is, a, uh, is an isometry. And a little exercise is, so suppose O has coordinates OX, OY, and then the goal of this simple exercise is to find a formula for SO in coordinates. Okay, so in Cartesian coordinates, that's that's very simple. Uh, so that's second example. So what else can we do? So another example which is very famous and we even discussed it already is what's all uh, what's called a reflection or uh, symmetry with respect to a line. Um, so consider a line in the plane, so that's a line L now. And then SL is a map from R2 to R2, uh, and uh, SL of x equal to y for a point y for y such that L is a middle perpendicular to the segment xy. So, uh, so basically, uh, uh, L passes through the middle of the segment xy and is orthogonal to it. So in another way, I take x and I want to see where it goes. I write down a perpendicular to L and then continue it and, and find a point on the same distance as x from L. So um, that's exactly what you see when you look at yourself in a mirror. So you see yourself mirrored, and that's what you actually see when you uh, see the lecture right now. That's, um, there is a mirror reflection going on here. Um, and uh, mm, yeah, that's what a reflection 
And uh, writing a formula for it in general is slightly harder, but for instance, let's choose coordinate system so that we reflect with respect to the line y equal to zero. So suppose L uh, is equal to points x, y with uh, y equal to zero, and then SL obviously sends a point x, y to point x minus y. Uh, notice that SL fixes points of L. Um, and by the way, SO fixes O. Uh, and parallel transport fixes nothing, so has no fixed points. Fixed point of an isometry is a point which goes to itself. Perfect. Um, so these are some examples, and um, after we discuss them, let's let's talk about some properties of isometries. Um, so some properties are first very simple basic properties, what every isometry has, and then we'll start to talk about composition of isometries. Properties of isometries. So some properties. So, the first one, the first few are very obvious. So, isometries send lines to lines, um, circles to circles, actually of the same radius. And um, what 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 other figures do we know? Ah, triangles to equal triangles equal triangles, etc. So isometries preserve these geometric shapes. And um, let me just illustrate. So for instance, if you want to see that the line goes to line, so you have a line L and you want to see where it goes under F. So you take some point A, and it goes to some point F of A. And you have some point B, and it goes to some point F of B. And um, then, uh, since F is a bijection, these two points are distinct, uh, so these two points are distinct. So uh, uh, you get a line passing through F of A and F of B. And then if you take some point X here, then you know that the distance AX plus XB uh, equals to the distance AB. But then you know that some of the distances F of uh, A, F of X uh, plus F of X, F of B equals to the distance between F of A and F of B because isometries preserve distances, but it means that your point f of x is somewhere inside the segment. And the reason is because there is a unique point in the plane with this property, and that's, uh, that's inside the segment. And so you see that segment goes to segment, and then you similarly show that the whole line goes to line. So, so, so in general, you see that uh, f of l equals this line passing through f of a, f of b. By the way, this is how I denote a line passing through two points. This is f of the line AB. So that's totally trivial. Um, so maybe slightly less trivial observation is that uh, isometries uh, send equal vectors equal vectors. So if you have two vectors, let's say v1 and v2, and you know they are equal, but they are kind of uh, pictured at different points. So maybe this is x1, uh, y1, x2, y2. So then, of course, you can look at the vectors f of x1, f of y1, and f of x2, f of y2, 
and then we know that uh, okay, so this was a uh, these vectors are equal, so this is a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal, but then you know that since uh, uh, isometries preserve distances, you see similar property here. Uh, but this means that these two vectors are all also equal. So what it means? It means that uh, isometries send equivalent vectors to equal vectors to equal vectors. So uh, uh, for any vector v, vector v um, equal to x, y, we define f bar of v uh, uh, equal to the vector f of x, f of y. So that's a little subtlety here. So that's not how. So this this f bar is a map from a set of vectors in R two to the set of vectors in R two. Um, so, if you have like vectors, you can see what what uh, your transformation do does with vectors. And for instance, uh, to illustrate that, uh, maybe a little example examples. Um, if you take a parallel transport and look at what it does to vectors, so to vector x y, that actually sends a vector x y to x y. So it doesn't change vectors because every vector will move by the same uh, vector, and so you will get that that uh, um, uh, vectors don't change. So segments move, but but vectors don't change. And for instance, if you do a central symmetry uh, with a vector x y, and again I draw here this bar, meaning I apply it to a vector, you will get minus this vector, so vector y x. And and um, again, so points are reflected, but vectors are just sent to opposite vectors. Um, but if you do, for instance, if you take a symmetry with respect to a line, then something very strange can happen with vectors. So this vector and its image are uh, related in a complicated way. So um, this, this is a very important idea of what uh, uh, this f bar does with vectors. So then I want to give you uh, an exercise here. So an exercise is that, so we know how to sum vectors and how to multiply them on a scalar, and then one can check that f bar of vector v1 plus vector v2 equal f bar of vector v1 plus f bar of vector v2. So it sends sum of vectors to sum of vectors and f bar of lambda v equals lambda f bar of v. If you rescale a vector, it will go to the rescaled vector. And that's what in linear algebra people mean by uh, when they say that f bar, so f bar is a linear map. We'll come back to that a little later. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is, uh, a simple but important exercise. We will use these properties later on. Okay, so uh, that's the second kind of important observation. So next important story is what about composition? So remember, we when we talked about permutations, we were composing bijections, and when we talk about isometries, we can also start. We can start to do one isometry after another, and uh, this will give us an isometry again. And so it's very interesting to study this structure. So, three isometries form a group So, isometries form a group and uh, uh, what that means? It means that uh, so F and G are isometries so then the composition f and g is an isometry. Uh, then f inverse is an isometry. And finally, identity map of R2, that's a map which takes every point and fixes it, is also an isometry. 
So, um, uh, okay, so proof is totally obvious. Let me prove, for instance, this part. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, F and G are bijections, and composition of bijections is a bijection. So then, of course, if you first do F and then G, is a bijection. So, uh, yeah, I said FG, but let me write here GF. And then, uh, if you take any points X uh, and Y inside R2, then one can compute the distance between G, F applied to X, and G, F applied to Y. And this will be the distance between G of F of X, and G of F of Y. And since G preserves distance, this is the same as distance between F of X, F of Y, but this is the same as distance between X and Y. As simple as that. Okay, and, and similarly, F inverse and identities trivially preserves everything. So this is a group. Isometries form a group, so you can compose them, and this is kind of a multiplication. So this groups deserve a name. So the name is isom of R2. This is a group. And that's very interesting. So now we can start to compute certain compositions because um, uh, I mean we now know that that we can compose them. So we can start to see what happens when we compose something. So let's let's consider an example. So uh, so first, let's take vectors v one and v two. Uh, these are vectors. And then one can try to compose a parallel transport by V1 and parallel transport by, by V2. And uh, that's uh, very simple to do. So uh, I claim that that's nothing but the parallel transport by vector V1 plus V2. And so in particular, that's the same as TV2 composed with TV1. So when you compose parallel transports, the order does not matter. Um, and that's more or less clear. So you, you take a point X and then you take First you add vector v1, and then you add vector v2, and that's your point uh, uh, tv1 composed with tv2 of x. Uh, and, and you can also instead do first v2, and then do v1, and you will get the same point. So that's, that's trivial. Uh, and uh, maybe a slightly more interesting example is that one can do a symmetry uh, with respect to a point O1 and a symmetry with respect to point O2, and this will give a parallel transport by vector O1, O2 times 2, and that's an exercise. That's an exercise. And another exercise is what happens when you do SO composed with TV. So, so that's another exercise. What happens if you compose first a uh, parallel transport, then a symmetry? And of course, also interesting, vice versa. Um, in particular, notice that from here it follows that SO squared. So if you apply symmetry twice, that's the same as parallel transport by a vector, which is a zero vector, but that's of course identity map. So, uh, which one can also, yeah, okay, identity. So that's, that's a corollary of the previous one. Um, and maybe another example is if you take a symmetry with respect to a line and square it up, you will get identity map. So first you kind of reflect here, but then you reflect again and, and everything is fixed. So these are some examples of, of, uh, of compositions of isometries. Uh, perfect. So last thing I want to say about that um, is um, there is an interesting maybe corollary uh, that if you compose certain types of isometry, you get again isometries of this type. Composition of two parallel transports is a parallel transport. If you compose a symmetry with a parallel transport, as you will see here, this will be also a symmetry or a parallel transport. So this will be actually certain symmetry, but with different uh, center. And so um, 
it makes sense to talk about certain kinds of elements in a group. When you compose them, you get also elements in this group. And I want to finish this uh, this lecture with discussion with a quick discussion of subgroups and uh, uh, with an example of subgroups which which come from here. Very general definition. So definition. So let G be a group. So a subset H inside G is a subgroup of G if. So first, that's certain elements in G. First requirement is identity element is inside H. So second requirement is that for any two elements G1, G2 in H, when you multiply them, you will also get an element of H. You will definitely get an element of G, but you want to get an element of H back. And finally, for any element G in H, G inverse is inside H. And a very important uh, observation is that, uh, 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 so obviously, H is uh, a group, uh, and and of course, what it means, it means that I multiply elements in H in the same way as in G. But uh, uh, you can see that all properties of a group will satisfy. So product is there, and inverse is there, uh, is there, and also there is associativity property, which is true for every element of G. So in particular, for any element of H. So that's an example. Uh, that's a definition of a subgroup, and usually people say something like H and then like less or equal g, that means a subgroup, not just a subset. So, some examples. So, uh, as usual, in mathematics we start with trivial examples, so maybe zero example is that the every group has a subgroup consisting of the identity element, all properties are clearly satisfied, and g is also a subgroup of g. So every group has these two kind of stupid subgroups, the biggest one, the smallest one. And uh, the first interesting example is let's take a group G, which is S3, so permutations of three letters. And as H, I want to take a subgroup, which will consist of three permutations, identity. So this one must be here, because identity is always an H. But then I will take one, two, three, two, three, one. That's a certain um, cycle. And then I will take 1, 2, 3, uh, 3, 1, 2. And uh, if I denote this one by G, that's actually G inverse. Again, it must be here. And then one can easily check that that's a subgroup. And basically, if you start multiplying it, the first thing you worry about, OK, multiplying my identity is boring, but what happens if you take G squared? But then you easily notice that G squared is the same as G inverse. So actually, if you multiply any elements here, you will always get one of those again. That's a simple exercise. So that's an example of a non-trivial subgroup, uh, subgroup of S3. Uh, and, and then there are some examples coming from our discussion. So two is um, uh, we can take, for instance, uh, um, as G as a group of isometries. And as H, we can take a set of parallel transports. Transports. So, uh, so H consists of T V uh, for uh, V is a vector. By the way, I, I of course want to say that V is inside kind of R two, but but. One should not confuse here, like R2 meaning vectors uh, and R2 meaning the plane. So usually you can imagine that you have actual plane R2 and this is where points leave. And then you have kind of R2 which, which is vectors R2 and that's kind of a also plane with the origin O uh, and, and these are just vectors. 
And then the relation is that you can think of it as kind of a compass in your hand. For every point and every vector, you can always move by this vector. But there is no this zero, so this is kind of a, there is no this origin uh, here. So there is no special point on a plane, which is this kind of origin. And when you think of R2 as a set of vectors, then you have this zero vector. And if you have a vector between points x1, y1, x2, y2, the corresponding vector here will have coordinates uh, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. That's a relation. So that's a subgroup. And uh, another, and this is because composition of parallel transports is a parallel transport. And another example is maybe I can take, for instance, uh, parallel transports, transports, and then I can take it union with central symmetries. So that's also a subgroup of the group of isometries. And the reason is because um, if you compose two parallel transports, you get a parallel transport. You compose parallel transport with central symmetry, you will get a, a central symmetry. If you compose two central symmetries, you will get a parallel transport. So that's an example of, of a subgroup of isometries of R2. Perfect. So these are these are uh, certain interesting interesting examples. Uh, maybe a very general uh, example three is if if you take f any subset of R two, which is something I will usually call a figure, just any collection of points, then you can take H consisting of of elements f in isom such that they send the figure to itself. F of F is, is F. And that's, uh, these are just transformations which, which send your figure to itself, and that's what I will call sim of F, meaning sort of symmetries of the figure. For instance, if you take a triangle, which is a regular triangle, then you can rotate it by uh, something, and we'll discuss rotations later. There are certain symmetries you can reflect it, and so on. And and this will be all elements inside the subgroup. So these are isometries, but sending points of a triangle to points of triangle. And we call an object symmetric when there are laws of such transformations, and less symmetric when there are less number of those. If you take some some set like this. Uh, it will probably have no symmetries uh, at all except the identity one. And um, indeed so, the subgroup also has to have identity, so uh, this will be the only symmetry of this figure. And if you take a circle, it will have lots and lots of symmetries. Okay, so in the next lecture we will spend the entire lecture discussing rotations, a very important class of isometries.